we have a bit of a mystery because we seem to be missing Judy, our pianist. <laughs> so um, I have called her. Hopefully, she's just running late and everything's okay. We will say prayers for her that she, she comes. Um, and uh, as we go into a song, we may just skip it and move on. Um, so we'll be taking a public poll as we go along today. You know, the Holy Spirit moves in mysterious ways, and you just got to go with the flow. Um, please check your cell phones. Make sure that they are turned off or on uh, vibrate. Um, just a reminder that there are hand sanitizers in the pews ahead of you. So when we share the piece, please make use of those. Uh, the little attendance cards that we have. Um, please uh, fill those out and put those in the offering plate when those come around, come around so that you can know who is here today with us. Um, please stand as you wish. And let's begin uh, by stating, reading our written statement together. We seek to serve all God's children in this community and beyond, respecting their individual identities and recognizing we are all one in Christ. Um, do you, does anyone know I love you, Lord? I can sing it. Yes. You can sing it, right? Come on, Mary. Mary's going to lead us in I love you, Lord, the chorus. Let's continue with our brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us take a moment to share the peace with one another. There. You got good help this morning. How are you, sweetie? Good. How are you? Okay. Jennifer, I have a couple of 
card. Is that your card? Oh, Help wonderful. me remember after. <laughs> Thank you. I guess we'll look for the. Please stand as you wish. And we'll muddle with our muddle food and our opening being great as the Lord. We all kind of are familiar with, and Mary has agreed to plunk notes out as best she can. Thank you, Mary.
Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. church with us today. How are you guys doing today? So today in our gospel that we're going to read in a little bit, the gospel is the good news. It's all kinds of stories about Jesus and what he teaches us. And 
And today he's teaching us about bossy people. You have any bossy people friends? No? <laughs> no, none of your friends are bossy? That's good. <laughs> oh, you think it's this one? Okay. Well, sometimes, sometimes people, they, they get bossy because they see how we're doing things and they don't like how we're doing it differently than they are. So then they get bossy and say, no, you have to do it this way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Jesus says, no, don't be bossy. Be a helper. You need to help them in what they're doing. Show them how to do it and help them do it. Well, I help them play. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Always Jesus wants us to be a helper. Okay? Can we say a little prayer? Jesus, please help us to be helpers in the world, helping our friends and family so that they too can help us and we can all grow together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I have a little, I have a little Jesus for you. You're welcome. Thanks for coming up. Thanks for being brave and coming up. Please stand as you wish. And let's sing our gospel affirmation, Lord, when our beaker is soiled.
The good news today is very clear. We don't have to wash our hands anymore. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> and here just uh, how happy that makes Karen and other parents of small children and grandparents in the world no longer having to struggle with getting little ones to wash their hands. I can hear them cheering now. Jesus said we don't have to wash our hands anymore. No longer will we have to struggle those battles that seem to be endless and pointless. We probably don't even need the hand sanitizers we use anymore at church. Hey, I bet you surgeons don't have to wash their hands before they operate. How comforting is that? <laughs> Something is telling me that that is not the lesson that Jesus is trying to teach today. So what is the lesson? What is the good news for today? Our friends, the Pharisees, are once again up to their usual pearl-clutching and finger-wagging antics. If you're wondering why they are always like this, it's not just that they are power-hungry. That comes later in the story of Jesus. You see, the Jewish people had always been praying and hoping and waiting for a Messiah. And it has taken so long that the Pharisees had decided that their sacred ways, their priestly ways, that it must be because the people are not doing them. That's why the Messiah had not come. So the Pharisees want everyone to practice priestly ways, all the rites and rituals. And that will bring about the Messiah, even though he's already in their midst. So when they see Jesus and the disciples eating without following the ritual washing, they are outraged. And when Jesus responds with telling them, and it's not what you put into your mouth with your hands that defiles you or makes you savior, it's what comes out of your heart and out of your mouth. It's like Psalm 51 that we sing from time to time. Create a clean heart in me, O God and renew a right spirit within me. For the Pharisees, in all their traditions, their ways had become so important, so sacred, that they became more important than God. In Mark 3, chapter, uh, the third chapter, verses 28 and 29, Jesus says, Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all of their sins, every slander they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are all guilty of an eternal sin. And I think, I feel like the first the Pharisees had committed that unforgivable sin. They saw the Holy Spirit at work in the disciples, and it didn't match their own experience, their own way of doing things, their own human expectations of how to be holy, and they balked. And that's the pitfall that we still face today. How we can get so wrapped up in the how we do things and we forget the why we are doing things. We get obsessed with the differences between us and other Christians. We ignore the beauty that comes <clears throat> from a life being transformed by God. In Isaiah, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. We can't see the path that God walks with another person. And we sometimes can't even see the path clearly that we're walking with God. But when we come across them, we need to make sure that we don't try to steer them onto our path, that we let them walk with their path, where God has called them. Because that's beauty. And that's wonderful. What we can do is share our stories when we meet people that are on a different path. Share our stories of our travels with God, how God has affected our life. The prayers answered, the prayers unanswered, the stories of God alive and in action in our lives. Those stories, when they come from our hearts and they come out of our mouths, 
They give strength. Those stories feed faith. Those stories plant mustard seeds in other people. And yes, we still have to wash our hands. Amen. Please stand as you wish. I was there to hear your morning cry. Let us confess our faith together as written in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. and stuff are in the handy duty <clears throat> pull out separate things um, please take that home and put it up on your board um, game night is coming up September 14th um, and it's bingo time that'll be from 
1779. Um, if you'd like to donate any prizes for the bingo, um, please bring them by and drop them off at the church. Um, Domino's is on Thursdays from noon to four. Come and play Domino's whenever one if you want. Church council meeting is coming up. This is a misprint in the, um, it is on the 17th of September, not the 18th. Um, Sorry, the, the newsletter also came out and the newsletter had it listed twice, once correctly on the 17th and then it said once on the 24th. Ignore that one's not correct. It's the 17th. The 17th is where the council meeting is. It's the first one back for the season. Um, so please come. That's at 6.30. 6.30, 7.30, or longer, depending on how much out there you get to. Um, the new uh, Christ in Our Home for October through December is out there, out there in the narthex. There are still some of the other ones as well uh, that end in September. So keep those up when you know. Thank you, Maya. Are there any other announcements that I have forgotten or perhaps don't know about? Um, and let's give a round of applause for Mary. Thank you, Mary. Um, we are imperfect people. <laughs> Please stand as you wish.
The bread is gluten-free. There is juice in the center and wine on the outside. Come forward at the usher's direction. I will need two assistants to help with communion. Can I get two people to help with communion? Thank you, and thank you, Nina. Please stand as you wish. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with grace at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you and keep you and give you grace, 
all this. Amen. Let us conclude with our mission, reading our mission statement together and go out singing. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.